In today's video, we're gonna be talking about some of my most heavily used hotkeys inside of Photoshop. In a previous video, the one that I did about my Wacom tablet, I'll put a link right up here. Uh, I talked a little bit about the fact that I don't use a lot of the programmable buttons because I prefer to use the hotkeys. Inside Photoshop, there is a hotkey for absolutely everything. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you the ones that I use the most often. So let's jump into it. My favorite and probably the hotkey that I use the most often is the way that I zoom in and zoom out on an image. Uh, I'm gonna do my best in this video to translate stuff into for our Mac users, the Mac users among us. In order to zoom in and zoom out quickly on an image, I hold down controller command and spacebar. Then I click, I guess it would be left click and then drag either right or left. You see how it gives me my little magnifying glass if I drag to the right, it zooms in. If I drag to the left, it zooms out. So I can really zoom incredibly fast in this scenario. Also, if you are zoomed way in on an image, if you just hold down spacebar, it doesn't matter what tool you have selected, you can always click and drag around. This is a way of nicely navigating around your image if you're zoomed way in on it. Another hotkey that I use absolutely all the time is I just hit B and that selects our paintbrush. So if I if you have another tool selected and you hit B, it always gives you your paintbrush. If we have a new layer selected here, you can see our paintbrush tool. Um, B for paintbrush, B for brush. When you do have your paintbrush, all you have to do is hold down Alt or Option, and that's gonna give you your little eyedropper tool. So this is the way that you can select or sample a color from within your image. So I'm holding down Alt or Option, you click and drag around and it'll give you a little preview of exactly the color that you're selecting. So if I wanted to sample a color from the sky, for example, for dodging and burning, I could just hold down Alt or Option, drag around until I got the perfect color. Then I can go in and tweak that color by just clicking on our color swatch tool, color picker tool, and then I can make it either brighter, darker, more saturated, less saturated. When you are dodging and burning, when you do have your brush tool selected, if you hit X, it toggles between your foreground color and your background color. So this is very useful if you're working with a layer mask because you can toggle between white and black. Also, if you ever want to take a look at your layer mask to see what you're actually doing, if you hold down Alter Option and click on that layer mask, it shows you exactly what that layer mask looks like. For example, I have black selected right now. If I paint black, you can see that we're adding black. If I hit X, it's gonna switch back to white, and now we're painting with white. Also, when you're using your paintbrush tool, all of your number keys will change your opacity of your brush. So right now we're at 50% opacity, but if I was to hit the number one key, it changes it to 10%, two to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, you get the idea. Really quick way of changing the opacity of your brush. If I was to hold down shift and hit one of those, it's going to change the flow of our brush. So for example, if I wanted to change our brush to 50% opacity, 50% flow, I would hit five for opacity and then shift five for the flow. Also, if I right click with my paintbrush selected, it's gonna bring up our brush tool here much faster than going up here and clicking on the paintbrush tool. I can just always right click, change the hardness or the size of my brush if I wanted. But the way that I change the size of my paintbrush is I use the bracket keys, the little square bracket keys on your keyboard. If I hit the right bracket, it's gonna make my brush larger. If I hit the left bracket, it's gonna make it smaller. Other hotkeys that I use all the time is I will do Controller Command T. That is for transform. I need a pixel layer to do that with. So if I go controller command T, it's going to bring up the free transform tool. That's You could also access that by making a selection, right clicking, and then selecting free transform, but it's much faster to just go controller command T for transform. This is what you would do if you wanted to stretch a mountain or maybe go into warp and warp a mountain, make that whatever you're gonna do. But that's just a really quick way to access the free transform stuff. Also, like pretty much every other program, if I want to undo something, I just go Control or Command Z, 
or undo. Another one that I use and talk about all the time is called a merge visible layer. A merge visible layer is nothing more than the current state of our photo on its own layer. That way we have pixels to actually work with. So let's say we're gonna clone something out or maybe we're gonna sharpen our image, something like that. We, if we needed pixels in order to play with, we would use this merge visible layer. And to do that, you go Control Shift Alt E or Command Option Shift E. And that's going to give us this layer here. This layer is nothing more than the current state of our photo on its own layer. That way we have pixels to play with. So now if we were going to export this for the web, what I would often do is I would take the current state of our photo, I would copy it, put it into its own document, and then resize it, then, re then sharpen it. That way we're resizing, then sharpening. That way we're not messing with our master file here. So the quickest way to do that, try to keep up kids, that's the beauty, beauty of videos is you can always pause it. To select it all, I'm gonna go Control or Command A for all. For copying it, I'm gonna go Control or Command C. For creating a new document, I'm gonna go Control or Command N for new. That's gonna bring up this pop-up, I'm gonna hit Create. And now to paste what we've copied onto this, I'm just gonna go Control or Command V. So if we're to do that quickly, like I normally would, I would go Control A, Control C, Control N, Enter, Control V. Or you can replace Control with Command. Now we have our image in its own document. Now we can resize it, sharpen it, and it's not gonna mess with our master file. And finally, the one that I do at the end of every edit, I actually will go Control or Command W for close, and then it's gonna ask me, do you wanna save this? And well, why yes, I do wanna save my work. And then I hit yes. What that's gonna do, it's gonna save it, and then close it. Another way of doing that would be to hit Control or Command S for save, and then once it was done saving, I could go Control or Command W for close, but I can save a little bit of time and just hit Control W and then do both in one step. So yes, I know I just hit you with a whole bunch of hotkeys all at once really fast, but the beauty of videos is that you can go back and pause it. So try to memorize these one at a time. Hopefully this helps, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.